In this episode, we are taking a closer look at investment opportunities in the gene editing, also known as CRISPR world. If you watch this video, you may already be somewhat familiar with what CRISPR is or what it can do. You may have also read the Wall Street Journal article from February 19th of 2021, what gene editing can do for humankind, and therefore have developed an interest in the technology, the industry behind it, and its potential investment opportunities. Or you may be familiar with ARK Invest and Kathy Wood's disruptive innovation fund, ARK K. And with the stock market currently going through a correction, you may soon want to go on a buying spree and you wonder, where should I put my money? And if you're not inclined to merely park your money in the ARK K fund, which would be perfectly fine, but you're looking to invest your money into a specific company, you need to do proper due diligence. So in this video, we are going to take a closer look at two companies working in the gene editing field using CRISPR technology in order to determine which of the two may be a better choice for your investment. And please note, although I have a PhD in biomedical engineering and over 15 years of working experience in the healthcare industry, I do not intend to give you investment advice. Please do your own research before making any investments. You are watching Health Wealth. If you're new to this channel, welcome. If you're not, nice to have you back. So in this episode, we are comparing CRISPR Therapeutics versus Editas. CRISPR Therapeutics, ticker symbol CRSP, has come down from $210 in the middle of January 2021 to $125 as the recording of this video in February 27. This decline could mark an interesting entry point into this stock, so we are going to take a closer look at it. CRISPR Therapeutics currently has four phase one clinical trials, all in the area of cancer treatment. Although the ability to edit genes through the CRISPR technology is fascinating and has huge potential, the development of any commercial treatment modalities needs to go through the traditional route of clinical trials. The road to commercialization goes through three different phases of clinical trials, referred to as phases one, followed by phase two, and if successful, by phase three. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like me to make a future video explaining more about the clinical trial phases. For now, you need to keep in mind that at each phase, a clinical trial can be stopped if that phase is not successful. And keep in mind that clinical trials are multi-year long undertakings. CRISPR therapeutics are enrolling anywhere between 45 to 131 patients in their clinical trials. And those phase one trials last seven years. With the exception of one study, which started in the middle of 2019, all of their other studies were started in 2020. So the majority are scheduled to be completed by 2027. As potential investors into CRISPR therapeutics, we would want any of their treatments to reach the commercial phase as soon as possible. However, if we put ourselves into the shoes of a prospective patient needing their treatments and services, we would want, of course, to make sure that the treatments we receive are highly efficacious and safe of all. And efficacy and safety are determined throughout the different phases of a clinical trial. Therefore, shortcuts are not really possible in the healthcare industry. And let me be clear, a clinical trial can fail in any phase, therefore preventing the successful road to commercialization. Therefore, the chances to bring at least one new product commercially to market should increase with the number of different products going through the clinical trial phases. So let's jump to editors for comparative purposes. The editor's stock price, ticker symbol EDIT, has come down from uh, the highs of about $90 in uh, early December, now to about $43 as of the recording of this video in late February 2021. So potentially this stock could also now be had for a significant discount. 
Unlike CRISPR therapeutics, EDITAS have one interventional study currently ongoing and one observational study. In addition, EDITAS have currently received an FDA clearance for a new treatment for sickle cell disease and expect to be able to enroll first patients by the end of 2021. Also by the end of 2021, editors are expected to present their development candidate for the treatment of retinitis pigmentosa. So this could mean that a clinical trial would be started sometime after that. Furthermore, editors have preclinical activities in the treatment of uh, solid tumors, but no concrete clinical trial yet. So regarding the active clinical trial, their interventional study involving 18 patients has started in September of 2019 and is scheduled to last until the March 2024. So potentially with the successful completion of their phase one clinical trial in 2024, this could be the first point where the stock price may take a significant rise. Of course, we can always expect interim clinical trial updates from both companies. And those results, either positive or negative, of course, can have an influence on the stock price. I think you may also wish to consider in your potential investment scenarios that there has been a recent change in the upper management at Editas. James Mullen, the former chairman of the board, is now the new CEO at Editas. Furthermore, the recent decline in stock price may also be attributed to the fact that Editas raised more capital through another sale of stock worth $231 million. On the flip side, however, this means Editas, just like CRISPR Therapeutics, are well funded in order to support their clinical activities. Of course, as both Editas as well as CRISPR Therapeutics are working on preclinical, that is, not commercialized products, both companies are pre-revenue. I really hope that you found the comparison of these two interesting companies useful for your own research and investment purposes. I have intentionally focused on the clinical trial aspects more than the financials because the battleground really for a successful introduction of these treatments are in fact clinical trials. Both of the companies that we have compared here today have very interesting clinical trial programs and I wish them personally utmost success for these clinical trials. The kinds of treatments they develop are absolutely life-changing for any potential future patient. Both companies are working on their scale-up of the clinical trial supplies. And when eventually these treatments become commercially available after the successful conclusion of phase three clinical trial, the kinds of returns should equally be life-changing for any early investors. Please consider liking and subscribing to my channel if you're interested in this kind of content.